Hey everyone, hope you're having a great morning. I wanted to hop on and talk to you guys um, about a subject that God was really emphasizing this morning. And these are some simple characteristics that you will see in your God-ordained kingdom spouse. Amen. Um, and you guys know I do a lot of talking to singles on this channel. Um, and so I wanted to hop on and talk to the singles today about some things that are pretty basic, pretty simple, but I really felt like God was emphasizing today. And I get a lot of questions from you guys on these particular things. So let's hop right into this. Um, and so we'll start off with the number one characteristic that your kingdom spouse will have. And this is for guys and ladies. Okay. Um, number one, the person that God has for you will draw you closer to God's presence, not farther away from his presence. Amen. The person that God has for you is going to inspire you to want to get closer to God's heart. Amen. God's not going to send someone into your life that is a good gift. Remember, it's impossible for God to give bad gifts. He's not going to send someone into your life who's going to draw you farther away from God's presence. That's just not his nature. It's not who he is, ladies and gents. Um, and so they're going to draw you closer to the heart of God. They're going to, their walk with God is going to inspire you. They're going to want to, um, you know, partner with you in the place of being with God. And they're going to draw you closer to his heart, not farther away. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, you will have a peace with the relationship. You guys ever have that feeling kind of in your gut sometimes where it's just like you feel ick and you can't quite put your finger on why? You know, the person that God has for you, you're going to feel such a peace about them. Amen. Especially the more that you get to know them and talk to them. Um, when that right time comes in your life, ladies and gents, there's going to be a peace on that thing. It's not say every day is going to be perfect. It's not say that person's going to be perfect or you're going to be perfect. If you're looking for a perfect person, I've got news for you, ladies and gents. They do not exist. Okay. <laughs> um, but the right person, you're going to have a peace on that relationship. God's peace is going to be on it. You know, um, I've got a series on YouTube called Hearing God's Voice. If you guys want to go check out those videos, they're really good. And I talk about that one of the ways that God can speak to us about situations is whether or not we feel his peace on a thing. Amen. And, you know, God will put his peace on the right paths for your life. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. That is his wisdom, his guidance, trying to break through in your life. And you're going to have a peace about the right one that God has for you. Amen. So that's number two. Number three, they will be okay. This is for um, Christians specifically. They will be okay with remaining pure until marriage. Okay. This is important to God. It's important to his heart. And it will be important to the one that God has for you. Amen. And so um, that's a prerequisite, ladies and gents. That's very, very critical. Okay. All right, number four, same goals and beliefs. Now, when I say this, I don't mean that they have to be identical to you. I don't mean that all their interests have to be the same. I don't mean that they have to even have the exact same giftings or whatever it is on their life. But what I am saying is, you know, they've got to believe that Jesus is Lord. Amen. You know, you guys have to be on similar beliefs in your life in order for things to work, ladies and gents. And so um, that's really, really critical. Um, and I, I talked to so many couples who really like someone, but this part of their, their life is completely not aligned. And I'm like, that's not going to work, chickadee. <laughs> like, you've got to consider this stuff. It's really, really important. Okay. Number five, they're faithful to you. This is critical. Really, really critical, ladies and gents. Um, and it goes, actually, I'll go ahead and hop into it. A later point that I put down is trust. You cannot have a relationship without trust, ladies and gents. And the one that God has for you, you're going to be able to trust them. Amen. And they're going to be faithful to you, right? You know, God doesn't give bad gifts. You know, the Bible clearly says that every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights, right? And so God is going to send someone who's going to be faithful to you, who you can trust them. They're going to be a really, really good gift in your life. Okay, so that's the next one. The next one is they're loving and respectful, you know, and this comes straight from the Bible. You know, the Bible says husbands love your wives, wives respect your husbands, right? And um, so the one that God has for you is going to be this way. They're going to have the fruit of the spirit on their life. And it's not to say they're going to be perfect all the time. Again, everybody has bad days sometimes, right? Um, but it is to say that the one that God has for you is in general going to demonstrate that good fruit on their life, okay? Um and that leads me to my next point is um, number seven, they will have that demonstrated fruit on their life, okay? A lot of people claim to be Christians, ladies and gents, but there are far fewer people who have legit good fruit on their life. And the Bible says that you will know them by their fruit. 
And so if you've got a person who's saying all of the right things, but they're not acting the right things, ladies and gents, you need to run and you need to run quickly. Okay. All right. You know, if they say they claim Jesus, they're showing up at prayer meeting one day up at the club the next day, you know, they're talking to 5,000 different people at once, you know, they're, I don't know what it is, all the things, right? You know, but they're, if they're doing that stuff, they don't have good fruit on their life, ladies and gents, something is wrong. Amen. And so the person that God has for you is going to have some fruit on their life. You know, they're going to be headed in the right direction. They may not be perfect yet. They may still be struggling with a few things, but they're going to have demonstrated fruit on their life. Amen. And the other thing that I want to say with this is really critical. I'm going to pause in between points here. I talk to so many people, so many singles come to me on a regular basis and they say to me, Jill, I really just want a godly spouse. I really want someone who's going to be, you know, X, Y, Z, and yet they're not willing to live it themselves. Ladies and gents, if you are praying for God's best and if you are believing for a godly spouse, you also need to walk it. I hear singles so often and they pray the prayer. They say, God, send me a godly spouse, send me a godly spouse. And yet they're still living completely like the world. It's like, come on, y'all. We need to flip those prayers around and say, God, make me a godly spouse. Make me a good gift. Help me to walk a pure life. Help me to seek you first in every area of my life, Lord. You know, it's so critical, ladies and gents. It's not bad to pray for your future spouse. It's not bad at all. We should do that sometimes. Amen. You know, but it's very important that we learn to examine ourselves and learn to get deep in our own walk with God first. Only then can God introduce you to someone and it can be a good gift because you're rooted and anchored in God yourself first. Ladies and gents, it's critical. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Um, number eight, you will be equally yoked spiritually. Okay. And let me talk about what this means. All right. You know, a yoke was something that they put on oxen back in the day, and they would have to go at the same pace, be in the same direction kind of a thing in order to correctly handle a load, right? So this, this phrase, equally yoked, that we hear so often in Christian culture is talking about they need to be at the same level as you. Amen. They're going to be running at about the same pace, right, in your life. And I think that's something that I see that is such a big misconception in the Christian community is that, oh, if they're a Christian, that's good enough, right? Well, if you've got one person that is a boss in the spirit up here and, you know, you're talking to somebody who barely shows up to church, they don't have their own personal walk with God, they don't really pray, you know, they technically claim to believe in Jesus, but there's no fruit on their life, that is still unequally yoked, Ladies and gents, you need someone who is going to help you to be able to run your race with you and who is passionate about the Lord and is on a similar level to you. Amen. Um, it's really, really, really critical. Okay. Number nine, God will confirm them to you in a place of prayer. Okay. And that goes back to hearing God's voice. Again, if you need um, a brush up on that, go check out my YouTube videos on YouTube. They're quite a ways back, but if you find them, they're all labeled hearing God's voice. And I've got part one, two, three, four, five, whatever they are. Um, but God wants to confirm things to you, ladies and gents. And sometimes that will be, you know, he can send you dreams. He can talk to you in a place of prayer. He can, you know, send confirmations in the natural. God can do all kinds of stuff, ladies and gents. It could be, you know, all different ways, but God wants to confirm to you these things, ladies and gents. God's not the author of confusion on your life. He, you know, he cares about this area of your life more than you could ever imagine, Ladies and gents, he just does. He's a good father. Why would he not care about this area of your life? You know, why would he go, oh, you know, I'll take care of every other area of their lives, but I'm going to leave them out to dry on this area of their life. No, this is one of the most important areas that God cares about, ladies and gents. And so he's going to talk to you about this. He wants to introduce you to the right one. He wants to make sure that you guys are in a good place. Amen. And he's the author of good gifts. God delights in giving good gifts to his kids. How much more does he delight in making sure that you are with a good and healthy person for the rest of your life and someone that's just going to be, you know, on fire for the gospel and really good for you. Okay. All right. So God will bring confirmation. Number 10, that person that God has for you, and this is something that I see people fall into a lot as well. They, the, the attraction that you have to them, the, the um, connection that you're intended to have with your future spouse will not be just flesh driven. Okay. Now you're probably still going to be attracted to that person, right? Like there will probably be a certain element of that because God gives good gifts, right? Um, and if you're waiting on his best, he's going to make it worth your while. Amen. But it's not just going to be flesh driven. You will be inspired by their spirit. You will be inspired by their walk with God. There will be a depth to that person. Again, they will draw you closer to the heart of God. Amen. That's part of what makes them a good gift. And so if it's just flesh, 
that's causing you to be attracted to someone, ladies and gents, and there's nothing else going on there could be a sign that's not from the Lord. Amen. You know, but if it's a whole package, ladies and gents, if it's someone who, you know, is a beautiful person in Christ, you know, their spirit's in a great place, you know, uh, X, Y, Z, whatever that looks like, um, that's really, really critical. And it's a good sign, ladies and gents. So not just flesh driven, but, um, spirit driven. They've got some substance to their life. Okay. Um, and number 12 is really critical, and that's that they are a willing participant, okay? Um, and this is one that uh, God's had to talk to me a lot about over the years. And um, I wanted to read you the story of Isaac and Rebecca today out of the Bible to end on this last point. And I really wanted to kind of dive into this with you guys um, just to kind of show you that God gives us a choice in our lives. Amen. Um, so, and I want to talk to you guys about how God's will, um, was established in this story, but also how he, um, still ultimately left the choice up to them. Amen. And so here's the deal. Even, you know, God gives us choices in our lives. Um, and I believe that God has a specific God ordained person for you. I do. You know, I am just one of those crazy people who believes that God ordains and he aligns your steps in these areas. Amen. But I also believe that, you know, God gives us a choice. All right. And so here's the deal. God gives us a choice on whether or not we go to heaven or hell. Amen. He leaves that decision up to us. He gives us a free will in our lives. Amen. And so it is God's will for everyone to go to heaven. He wants the entire earth to be saved, but we can choose whether or not to accept his perfect will over our lives or to deny it. And there's a lot of people who deny God's perfect will over their lives for the right person. And God's not going to continue to let others suffer just because someone else has made a poor decision with their life. Amen. And so how many of you guys know that God can give you double for your trouble? All right. But I wanted to read you guys. And the reason I'm able to talk to you guys about this subject is I know this good and well. I've walked through this kind of stuff before. Okay. Um, and so I wanted to talk to you guys about the story of Isaac and Rebecca here. And I wanted to show you something that rocked my world when God showed me this a while back. Um, absolutely changed my perspective on everything. And so I wanted to read you guys a straight up scripture on this and to walk you through this process. Okay. So basically what happened is Abraham had a son named Isaac and it was about time for him to get a wife. Okay. And so, um, he sent a servant out and this is in Genesis 24 to go and look for this wife for his son. Okay. And so here's what happened. It says, um, where do I want to start reading here? Uh, I'm going to start in verse six. Okay. So Genesis 24, six, this is Abraham talking. Um, actually, um, I'm going to start a little sooner. Okay. Verse five. Um, and the backstory to this is, um, Abraham is sending the servant to go get a spouse for his son, Isaac. Okay. Verse six says the servant asked him, what if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country that you came from? He said, make sure that you do not take my son back there. Abraham said, the Lord God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land and who spoke to me and promised me on oath saying to your offspring, I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. This is the critical verse. Listen to this. Verse eight, if the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Wow, isn't that powerful? When God showed me this a while back, my mind was blown. In other words, it was the will of God for God knew that Rebecca was gonna be the one that he had intended for Isaac. And yet he still put that clause in there because he gave her a choice. If the woman is unwilling, if this person is unwilling, you're released from the oath. I love even the words of that. The father in this story represents God the father. Amen. The marriage between, you know, Isaac and Rebecca represents God's will over a situation. Amen. He was going, you know what? This is my will over this particular situation is for these people to be together. But isn't it cool that God and his love still left that little segment in there where it says, um, I'm going to read it again to you guys. It says, verse eight, if the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from the oath. In other words, then you're released from the promise. You're released from being in a place of bondage, quote unquote, to this thing. 
you know, and from having to follow these commands, quote unquote. And that's because, you know, God gives us a free will. Now, it turns out really bad for the person on the other side if they choose not to follow the perfect will of God over their life. Amen. Um, but it does happen, you know, just like same with people who go to hell, right? You know, like the perfect will of God over their life is not for them to go to hell. God does not want them to go there. He does not want you know, them to make that personal decision to not accept him as Lord, but God allows them to because God does not force us into things in our lives. Amen. And so that releasing from that oath, that releasing from the promise, it brings freedom um, from the place of bondage. And guess what? You know, in this story, I truly believe God is not going to, even if Rebecca had said no in this circumstance, thankfully she didn't, right? But even if she had said no, in this particular circumstance, God would not have left Isaac out to dry. You know, there he would have raised up somebody else to be with. You know, he's not going to punish someone for another person's disobedience in their life. Amen. And so all of that to say, that brought me a lot of comfort um, a few weeks ago. And, you know, God is so faithful, ladies and gents, and he has such good plans for this area of your life when it comes to your future spouse. And I just want to encourage you guys, don't settle. You guys know that I am an advocate in this area for seeking God first in your life, not dating around just for the sake of dating around, really believing God for the one and that he can cause you to cross paths with the right person at the right time. Ladies and gents, and you know, he's got such good gifts for you guys. You know, this list that I read you is such a simple list. It's based on scripture. Okay. It's based on scriptural principles. I didn't read all the scriptures off to you. Um, I probably should have done that where I could put the scripture out to the side that kind of, you know, walks you through, um, the logic behind all of those different points. But it's, it's, it's so powerful because God wants good things for you, ladies and gents. And so many people don't receive the best that God has for them because they are unwilling to wait on him. They are unwilling to surrender this area of their lives to him. You know, they feel pressure from family and friends to move on things quickly or to get into decisions really fast. And, and God is just saying to you guys today, if you will trust me, if you will wait on me in this area of your life. And sometimes it is a wait, ladies and gents. A lot of people are not willing to wait. I've met a ton of them. Christians, good people, you know. Um, but as a result, they don't get the cream of the crop blessings, so to speak. Amen. They, they can't receive God's very best that he has for them because they went in their flesh. And God gives us that right. You know, he says, he even talks about it in the Bible. He says, if you are just, you know, eaten apart um, in the place of lust, it's better for you to marry than to stay in that place. Right. And that's so many people. But it's never God's best for your life. It's never his will for you to just settle in your life when he has such good things. And, you know, the other thing that I want to speak, especially to Christians who are in ministry, is your marriage is going to be a ministry. Amen. Um, God wants to put you with someone who is going to help to advance the kingdom. Amen. Yes, it's about, you know, him wanting to give you a great gift too. And it's definitely going to be that. It's going to be something that's going to be so awesome. But, you know, a kingdom marriage represents Christ in the church. Amen. It represents the place of ministry. It represents the place of covenant. Amen. And so the person that God wants to bring into your life, especially if you wait on him, ladies and gents, is going to be someone that not only draws you closer to the heart of God, but that your marriage is going to draw other people closer to the heart of God. That's why God connects kingdom marriages, kingdom partners. You know, it's because they have an agenda to, to fulfill on this earth and on this planet, ladies and gents. So all of that to say, don't lose hope. If this area of your life has been under attack, I've experienced it myself, you know, um, don't lose hope. Continue to wait on God. Continue to pray, you know, continue to rejoice in God and surrender this area of your life to him in your single years because God cares more than you know, and he's got fantastic plans for your life. Do not lose hope. Amen. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll chat with you again soon.